Good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shereen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based in New York City, and welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you wondering why my room keeps switching back and forth, it's because I just learned about mirroring so that when I show you guys a product, you guys can read it. I hope you guys can read this one, and I hope I got it right. Um, let me check. All right, so now that we know this mirroring is working, we are ready to rock and roll. And today we are going to do six simple skincare swaps that you can do to help your skin transition from winter to spring. And today was actually the worst day to do this because my day started off very springy. I was wearing a t-shirt. It was 60 degrees outside. It was sunny. It was beautiful. Then all of a sudden it got really cold and really gray. And so the, the layers came on and I just, you know, basically started bundling up and just, I actually added a layer of hydration to my face because I did put on the fireplace earlier and my face was like, Ugh drying out. So six simple things to do. Number one, and the most important one is before you transition into anything, make sure that your skin barrier is actually intact and healthy. Because we know that in the winter, our skin barrier can be inflamed, broken red. And so you want to make sure that your skin barrier is healthy before you swap anything out. And how do we do that? We cuddle it, we coddle it, we stick it, with Vaseline and we just make sure we hydrate, 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 um, not just internally, but also um, superficially getting it all into our skin. You're trying to minimize how much your skin barrier is irritated. You're trying to minimize the intensity of the actives that you're using on your skin to make sure that your skin barrier is intact. And that is a very fast uh, review and summary of a whole video that I've done earlier. So I'm going to plug the link below. If you guys have not watched it, then watch how to, you know, maintain a healthy skin barrier because I think that is the cardinal rule, especially when the weather is shifting and changing and whatnot. All right. And that leads me to point number two. So once your skin barrier is inflamed, we really avoid exfoliating altogether because you're going to only further irritate your skin. But once we have a healthy skin barrier that is back and intact, this is when we can reintroduce exfoliation into our skincare routine, especially at night. And if you are sensitive, then start with something like mandelic acid. Um, I believe, and I'll find one for you guys. I actually, I have a towel on my lap today so that I don't uh, waste Kleenex. Um, Allies of Skin has their mandelic pigmentation correcting night serum. I will show it to you guys. Oh, well, it just fell off from the bottom. This is the pump top. Finally, it came out. I don't know, but it is a brown looking serum. The color doesn't really bother me, to be honest with you, but mandelic acid is one of the largest um, AHAs. And so if you are very sensitive, it is probably one that you can sort of introduce into your skin. Um, this is one by Alice of Skin. I never realized how long it took to get this stuff out of here, but I just wanted to show this one to you. Um, the other one that I've recently received is by Shawnee Darden. This one is their Lactic Acid Exfoliating Serum. I like it very much. It is a very lightweight texture. A little bit goes a long way with this one. And I like lactic acid because I do find it to be very brightening and slightly hydrating as well. If you're somebody who is more on the um, physical side, who likes to actually feel like you're physically exfoliating, I've always been a fan of this one by Huda Beauty, which is their Yoglo Enzyme Scrub. And I like this one because it does, it's like a gommage, which is a very, we can do a video on gommage one day, but it basically is not a physically, physically abrasive scrub, but it just sort of helps pick up any debris on your face enzymatically without being um, destructive to your face. So these are some physical scrubs as well as chemical scrubs that I like to use because they tend to be gentler uh, when transitioning from winter to spring. This takes me now to point number three, hydrating serums. And the reason why hydrating serums are huge in spring is because our climate changes. Hey, boo. And hi. Uh, and our, our air, the quality of our air changes. And I know I am generalizing a season for climate, but I'm trying to simplify this as much as possible. Springtime is a combination of dry and humid. 
because during the day, the air can fluctuate from ACs being on, if it's really hot all of a sudden, and all of a sudden we're sweating everywhere, to at night getting cooler and having the heaters back on, and then re-stripping our skin of its natural moisture barrier, etc. And so our skin is kind of confused because it's going from such like crazy shifts throughout a single day. And so hydrating serums are important because you don't want to over suffocate your face throughout the day if it does get hot. So in the morning, I actually prefer to moisturize my face in springtime with a hydrating serum. And if I'm super dry, I will either um, compound a gel moisturizer on top of that hydrating serum or use one of the products that I'm going about to show you. Now, if I am on the oilier side, I will just use a hydrating serum alone or a gel moisturizer, depending on your preference. So one of the three that I've recently discovered that I really love is Coco Kynes Ceramide Barrier Serum. Now, this guy has a huge playtime. A little bit goes a very long way. I mean, oh, it just basically dropped on the computer. Let's clean that. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Um, but yeah, so a little bit goes a long way. It, I mean, I'm not kidding. This, all this is all wet right now from just that half a drop. I'm not, not joking. So that is one that I really like. And steramides are essential in really restoring and maintaining a healthy skin barrier. Now, if you guys, like I said, are very dry and that is not enough, then you can supplement and add throughout the day. It doesn't all have to be in the morning this guy avino common restore gel moisturizer but if you're super dry you can just basically add this guy on top of it and marry it to the hydrating serum and you are going to be a plump raisin okay these are both glycerin based glycerin unlike ha is not detrimental to your skin if you compound it and use it in several products so i'm not nervous about you doing that but if you are somebody who doesn't want to layer a serum and a gel moisturizer, then I really like this one. Uh, La Roche Posay Tellurian Ultra Night or Nuit. Um, don't be fooled that you have to use it at night. You can actually use this one alone during the day. It is lightweight enough, but strong enough to do both. So I would pick this one. Now, if you don't want to layer, this is your person or hydrating serum. Now, if you're on the oilier side, I would just stick to a hydrating serum alone or a gel moisturizer alone, and I would skip this one. This one might be too rich for you. So this is a way that you can play with different kinds of textures and thicknesses of creams and hydrating serums. Number four, I have a lot of allergies. I can sound nasal at times. I can be super congested and springtime and fall, I, although I love fall, it's my favorite season, are not my friends when it comes to my allergies. Um, and so this is a time of year where you really want to look for ingredients with anti-inflammatory properties, things that are going to calm your skin down and really just calm any sort of superficial inflammation or deeper inflammation, which I will get to in a second because that is a skin tip. Starting with number one, niacinamide vitamin b3 it helps with repairing your skin barrier and has amazing anti-inflammatory properties in the sweet spot of two to five percent um glossier has one married to zinc so it can also be calming if you have any irritations or if you're on the tail end of winter trying to heal your skin barrier it is their glossier super pure alpha h also has a vitamin b niacinamide serum i love this one because of the color i know it sounds juvenile but it's just pretty and skincare is also meant to be dreamy so this one is an actually beautiful color it's just really nicely done um, but this is niacinamide and two options you can incorporate into your skincare routine the second one that is not often spoken about is licorice root extract and licorice root is a obviously acquired taste to the palate, but for your skin, it can work wonders. And it has two main uh, powerhouse effects. Number one, it helps to even out pigmentation. So if you're somebody who's struggling with an uneven pigment tone or skin tone or melasma or whatever, add some licorice root into your skincare routine. But number two, it actually has really good anti-inflammatory um, effects as well. And um, the reason it has great anti-inflammatory effects is because it contains, and I'm going to butcher this, glycerazine. 
Okay, G L Y C Y R R H I Z I N. <laughs> but that should be a word on the spelling bee. And that helps with atopic dermatitis, rosacea, and eczema. Sunday Riley Good Jeans, they're all in one. Lactic acid treatment does have licorice root extract in this, but just don't overdo lactic acid or any form of acid because you don't want to re inflame your skin barrier. Number three is Centella Asiatica, which also is known as Sika, and this does help to reduce inflammation and redness. Um, Dr. Jart has a whole Sika repair line that is green in tint as well, so it can help counterbalance some of that redness that is on your face. It is very fine on their serum. Their moisturizer is a little bit darker, but don't be fooled by the green tint because it's gonna help minimize the appearance, at least immediately, of your redness. Um, and then last is willow bark extract. And willow bark extract is an anti-inflammatory natural salicylate, which is basically like aspirin, and it helps to calm inflammation down. And Skin Iceland has an anti-blemish gel, I don't have it on me, um, that contains willow bark to help with blemishes, which makes sense and helps with any sort of superficial inflammation. So those are four different ingredients that can help with um, inflammation. Tip number five is married to a internal tip. Eye redness, eye puffiness. So I wake up in the spring and my eyes are super red and puffy over here. I look like I was in a bar fight the night before. It's like my husband's like, mm, who did I wake up next to? And I'm like, we're married for life. <laughs> But I will say a couple of tricks that I can do to help depuff pretty quick by the time I wake up, take a shower and get dressed. My BFF Flonase. And I often joke about this guy as being my replacement for a jade roller because it's green. But this guy, when put into your nose, and now I just did that on YouTube so everybody can see me um, insert the nasal spray up my nostrils, um, is one of the fastest ways that you can depuff if you are suffering from allergies because it does contain steroids, so it can help kind of drain everything and bring the swelling down in this area. Um, it is not to be confused with just saline spray, although saline spray will help get stuff out. The steroid in here is going to help to actually actively depuff. You just don't want to do this every day long term because it can have rebounding effects where you're going to get even more nasally and stuffy. So just be careful. And then I take my vitamin A, <laughs> and I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, Allegra, fexofenadine. It is an antihistamine that helps with my allergies. I literally take it actually every night so that I don't wake up as puffy as I used to, and it helps me throughout the night, and I can just start my day without having to worry. So this guy I'll take at night, and the Flonies I'll do in the morning when I wake up to really help get all that stuff moving. But those are internal tips, but skincare-wise, you can also help yourself by treating the redness, and I love Isden's Chaos Cream. It's another bottle I just bought. Um, I'm not, I will open it and show it to you guys. It's literally a brand new one, because that's how much I use this. But the vitamin K does help with some of the redness and it's a multi-use product because although it is indicated for the eyes and it has an applicator tip to be used underneath the eyes, right? Like this and like this. I actually, especially in allergy season, will use it in other areas that get red, like over here. All right, and sometimes I'll even put it, depending on how red I am, on my eyelid margin, etc. But it's a nice one. And it smells, it has like an after scent, which I enjoy because it kind of takes me away. But if you're sensitive, you might not like this because of the scent. And then the other one is Inculus. They have their caffeine eye cream. But what I like to do, and I actually did this, kind of weird, but whatever. Here's a hack. You take regular caffeine. This is, which one is this guy? Whipton tea. I mix it with coffee. And I let the tea bag sit in coffee. <laughs> Double the caffeine. And then I put it in the fridge. And then I'll take my tea bag from the fridge. Now this is not, this is like kind of like the step before the fridge. I'll just squeeze any excess water, put it in the fridge, and then you can use the tea bags on your eyes. It will stain your furniture and stuff if you let it kind of touch your stuff for a long period of time. So I would just dispose of it. But you can let the two tea bags, and that's what she said, sit on your eyes for several minutes. And it can actually really help with the deep puffing because they're cold, they're loaded from the caffeine of the tea and coffee because why not? And you're not hurting anyone by doing that. And I just use that on my eyes. It is a beautiful trick that works without fail. So that is um, eye tips for you. And Number six, 
people often assume, and I hope you guys don't because you guys are skin nerds and you guys are a little bit more educated than the regular Joe Schmo, or you're about to get more educated, but they assume they don't need sunscreen until it's summertime, which is still a very false assumption. So I love the Glow Screen by Super Goop. It is one that I also love in springtime because like I said, during the day, my skin freaks out, becomes a little bit more humid and oily. I don't want to be wearing a lot of makeup at all. So I really like this guy because it just doubles up as my final step in my morning skincare routine. And it takes the place of having to wear makeup, you know, and it gives me a nice, my best friend Uba told me I have to tap it, but I put a lot here, okay? But you guys can tap it, but I really think it gives a beautiful overall glow. I mean, maybe a bit more. I probably did one and a half fingers, two fingers for your full face. Um, I'll do a little another half a squirt. Ah, Shireen, be a little bit more generous. Voila. So, just to give you guys an idea, it really gives my face an overall glow in spring without having to feel like I need to wear makeup. I'm just like, the goal in life is to walk out skincare barefaced with just the least amount of makeup to give me that extra pep or step. I never want to feel like I have to wear makeup to camouflage who I am because I'm trying to portray somebody else. So that is my goal also with all of you, that you all are empowered with your skin, the skin that you have, to walk out the door with the bare minimum to feel great about yourself. But this one, Glow Screen, is one that I really like, especially in the springtime, because it gives me just enough of a glow to get me through that humid day and that sort of like drier night, especially when I'm going from the office to a dinner and I don't want to sit down and have to go apply my makeup. This does it for me. Um, so it is great. And last, this is actually tip number seven, which I did not say in the title of this video, but spring cleaning does not only apply to our homes, hence I have to get rid of the panels and stuff or move them into the, the Pillow Talk Derm library, but it also has to do with our skincare. I think it's important to take the changes in seasons to kind of go through your skincare closet and get rid of the stuff you're not using or use them elsewhere on your body and change your routine for your face. But if you have a really thick moisturizer, your legs are not gonna freak out from being overly moisturized. So use it there instead and switch the rest other moisturizer for your face. But try to go through your skincare to see what you're using and the stuff that you're absolutely not using or you didn't sit well with you, give it to a friend instead. Or, you know, somebody you don't like if you really reacted poorly to a product, you know, depends on you and your relationships with your friends. But I would say <laughs> get rid of the stuff you're not using at all and really reevaluate what you have in your skincare closet. Uh, and if I showed you guys the pillow talk germ closet, I would be a hypocrite because I really have to go through that to clean it out myself. But that is it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am Dr. Shireen Idris and I wish you guys all a beautiful and happy Saturday. See you guys next week.